Good morning, my name is Josh from Cyclone Source, and today, as quickly as Tropical Cyclone Paul blew up, he has collapsed and is now weakening quite rapidly in the Coral Sea. But not to be fooled, we do have another tropical low expected to form across the northern parts of Australia. We're moving into a pretty busy period by the looks of things in the back end of cyclone season 2024. The Buford Meteorology now has a 10% chance of tropical cyclone formation sometime in the next week around the Timor area, and this tropical cyclone can be bringing impacts to the Northern Territory and also for far northern Queensland. There's also the threat of another tropical low developing in the Coral Sea as well, but the chances for that system are very slim. And then later on in the video, we'll take a look at a more general look at the weather around the nation of Australia. Also, just to remind you guys, a very special announcement happening at Sunday morning, a big update to the channel, and also a very special winter weather forecast for 2024 winter season coming out on Sunday morning as well. So you want to be subscribed. You don't want to be missing either of those videos and announcements. Thank you so much for watching and well, let's get started. So taking a look at Tropical Cyclone Paul or at least the what I think is going to be the remnants of Tropical Cyclone Paul very shortly. As I did say yesterday it was in a pretty unfavorable environment and it has succumbed overnight to high levels of wind shear and also a little bit of dry air as well. I did say that the system would be pulling in quite a significant amount of dry air and you can really see it over the past two hours there is hardly any rotation on this Tropical Cyclone in the lower levels whatsoever. This is just really a massive cloud at this point, a rotating bunch of thunderstorms per se, which I guess in theory is a tropical cyclone, but this system here is very disappointing and is weakening off quite fast, and it's not going to be a tropical or anything for more than 12 hours from now. So Paul had a very good run while it lasted. I uh, got to Category 3 status, actually, I believe, very briefly, uh, definitely in terms of satellite em estimates, this tropical cyclone blew up and it got quite strong, but then it started to weaken off, of course, because it was in a very unfavorable environment. And if we do take a look at the environment for this tropical cyclone right now, uh, wind speeds up in the high levels for this tropical cyclone. You're talking about 40 kilometers an hour, about 20 knots, not very good for tropical cyclone intensification. It isn't the worst that I've seen in terms of wind shear in the Coral Sea for a tropical cyclone. I mean, Kiralee had high levels of wind shear, but 20 knots of wind shear will be able to knock a tropical cyclone apart quite well. And that has certainly happened in this case here. Yeah, 20 to 30 knots of wind shear and the tropical cyclone certainly has not liked that at all. We'll take a look at mid-level humidity as well. Humidity up in the mid-levels. I generally check it around 500 HPA. That's generally a pretty good area, but you can also use 400 HPA or 500 HPA. 500 HPA is the probably the best um, flight level to be using for checking mid-level humidity in tropical cyclones. And in this case here, mid-level humidity where the low pressure area is, is about 40% or so, 50%. And then for further towards the west, it's about 5%. And as we saw with Tropical Cyclone Olga, 5% is not going to cut it for Tropical Cyclone intensification. You typically want a middle of the humidity values of around 70% in the Coral Sea for storms to intensify. Around the world, you can have slightly lower values to see intensification, but it's certainly in the Coral Sea, you need some higher uh, middle of the humidity values. And Paul certainly doesn't have that. And that is why it is a rapidly weakening system at this time. And you'll see this on the rainfall forecast as well. If you were to take a look at the rainfall forecast model, you're not going to be seeing any of the reds and blacks around the storm's center. You're going to be seeing whites and blues on the windy uh, charts because the storm is weakening and its convection or thunderstorm activity is all very displaced, which means it's a long way away from the center of circulation. Now, moving forward on Tropical Cyclone Paul, not expecting direct impacts from this system on the Queensland coastline, but I have highlighted the possibility that in around five days time, we're going to be seeing some significant rainfall on the tropical northern Queensland coast sign for areas between Townsville up towards Thursday Island and also believe there's a chance of some significant rainfall around the Mackay and Rockhampton and White Bay area but I'm not 100% sure right now I actually haven't looked this morning so I'll go through it very very shortly but first off taking a look at far northern Queensland um, we're going to be seeing at some time around Monday or Tuesday next week a tropical low start to develop uh, between PNG and Indonesia on some of the remote islands through here north of the Northern Territory and north of the Arafura Sea as well it isn't uncommon that we see a tropical low spin up here in this uh, corner of Australia right up close to the equator at around five degrees north. It happens every now and then, um, every couple of years, especially in the late season. It's a very common area for late season tropical cyclones up here. And we could be seeing something slowly spin up maybe next Tuesday or Wednesday. The Eastern Blue isn't overly uh, confident in this actually forming, but the Access G3 model does have something, especially from Tuesday onwards. We're going to be using the Access G3 model here because it is short range and 
north of the axis is kind of to a degree backed up by the GFS forecast model, or it's actually very well backed up by the GFS forecast model. So there's congruency between the axis model and the GFS, not so much the eastern F model. But anyways, using the axis G3 model, you can see that Paul's remnant energy picks up a lot more moisture as it gets around the PNG sort of area in the western extremities of the Coral Sea as it draws close to the Cape York Peninsula. And we're going to see this big, long trough extend uh, over the Cape York Peninsula and parts of Arnhem Land on the Northern Territory from Tuesday evening onwards. And that's going to be driving rainfall accumulations up, especially for far northern Queensland, for areas between Townsville up towards probably Laura or Lockhart River, um, specifically around Cooktown by the looks of things in Hopevale. Uh, you can see, especially Wednesday evening through Wednesday into Thursday, I mean, that is an awful lot of rainfall on Thursday, just colliding with the coastline here. Um, and yeah, we're going to be seeing rainfall accumulations probably approach half a metre or so. Uh, keep in mind throughout Wednesday, Thursday and Friday, that's kind of the worst of the rainfall, but there will still be rainfall right through next weekend, right up towards probably Sunday when it should hopefully start to ease off. And you can see this tropical cyclone here really gathering some pace here. It takes its merry time through Thursday, Friday and Saturday to really form. And then this here becomes another tropical low uh, that will spin up in the Coral Sea. So a very complicated forecast up here in the Coral Sea uh, with these two tropical lows expected to spin up. In short, a big burst of tropical moisture is expected to start from Wednesday, and that'll persist through Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday for tropical northern Queensland. A lot of rainfall can be expected. Uh, as I have said, we'll just get into the nitty gritty very shortly. Um, but yeah, it's going to be an unpredictable forecast. It'll be a very difficult forecast to make, but I'm very confident in the sense that this is how it is going to be panning out. I've been saying it for a couple of days now, and I, I really do think that this is what's going to be happening. So if you do live in far northern Queensland, prepare for some very significant rainfall, possibly up towards four or 500 millimetres, depending on your location specifically, uh, through Wednesday, uh, Thursday and Friday. The Axis G3 is generally very bullish in terms of rainfall. They're calling for up towards a metre or even 1.2 metres of rainfall up here around Cape Tribulation down towards Port Douglas. I think that that is very, very bullish. I don't think that that's going to be happening. Uh, yeah, that is very bullish in terms of rainfall that's expected. But I wouldn't be writing off totals up towards 500 millimetres up there. So probably about half of what the Axis G3 model is forecasting. In terms of a tropical cyclone up here, well, yeah, it certainly will be a fully fledged tropical cyclone by next weekend, and it'll probably be rapidly intensifying as well, right up towards landfall on Arnhem Land. It's probably going to be a dry cyclone by the looks of things as it gets closer to landfall. I mean, there's not too much rainfall in terms of uh, convection surrounding this tropical cyclone here. Um, so it'll probably be a drier than usual tropical cyclone where maybe only 50 or 100 millimetres falls. But considering it's 10 days out, we're going to have to look at this forecast a lot closer to the date. It's on the cards for next weekend, Saturday and Sunday, uh, the 20th and the 21st respectively. Um, but yeah, it, we're just going to have to wait and see really. I can't be giving a detailed forecast on a tropical cyclone 10 days out, but I am still confident that the forecast will plan uh, pan out like this. We're just going to have to wait and see. And again, a secondary tropical low in the coral see through here. That's no threat to Queensland, but we'll keep an eye on it. And that is the remnant moisture of the uh, extreme rainfall that will be falling around Queensland Thursday and Friday, or Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. So yeah, probably by around Monday or Tuesday, I'll be giving you a very detailed forecast on what's actually expected um, up in far northern Queensland. Uh, but right now, I can't really be saying specifics, but I am giving you a very good idea on what is expected. Certainly prepare for some significant rainfall at this time. In terms of other interesting weather happening around Australia, there really isn't a whole host of it by the looks of things. It looks like the South Pacific might come alive towards the end of April. There is going to be a bit of an MJO, Madden Julian oscillation moving over there. That's what's actually driving the tropical moisture over at the top of Australia, the MJO, which you can think of it like a big ball of energy. It's like a big energy buff that moves uh, counterclockwise around the globe's equator. And every month or so, it passes over this same location and delivers a big energy buff. And it looks like as we get towards April or later April, the energy buff per se is going to be moving over the top of the South Pacific and we'll likely be seeing some enhanced tropical activity through there. Again, I'm not going to be making any detailed forecasts on it right now, but you bet in a couple of days, especially for Vanuatu, uh, people watching the video, same with Fiji or New Zealanders, uh, I'll be giving you guys a lot more love, that's for sure, because there is something that could be rumbling through there. 
Now, I guess it's only fair that we take a look at ex-tropical cyclone Olga as well, considering it did actually impact Western Australia as a, well, not a tropical cyclone, but it was close enough to a tropical cyclone, I guess. It did deliver some pretty strong wind gusts, I believe. The strongest wind gusts at Exmouth were around 50 kilometers an hour. Yeah, 50 kilometers an hour. And they also picked up, I believe, about through 30 millimeters of rainfall or something like that. It was close to 30 millimeters of rainfall. The remnant low is still sitting offshore right now. It's driving a little bit more rainfall ashore. Nothing crazy, though there's just a couple of speckly showers here and there. And then a couple of showers and storms inland across the uh, central wheat belt and also into the goldfields and gas corner as well across Western Australia. They're non-severe. They're nothing to worry about. They're not going to be delivering any sort of heavy rainfall, just a light sprinkle here and there. They'll probably be more annoying than they will be good. Uh, but yeah, up towards Exmouth, they did actually get a bit of a cyclone scare. I know I said that it wasn't going to happen. It did end up happening, but I mean, it really wasn't a tropical cyclone. Let's be real. 50 kilometer an hour wind gusts is nothing. It's just a storm in a teacup, really. Uh, but again, the Bureau of Meteorology never called for this storm to go anywhere near land. They called for it to be remaining well offshore, but this tropical cyclone did come quite close to land. And yeah, Olga certainly had a tremendous peak up towards Category 4 status. It was an amazing storm to track uh, and very thankful that it did an intense fire right up towards its landfall in next mouth because it would have done some very, very serious damage had it done that. I can't get over how quickly Paul blew up and died. I mean, it was only yesterday morning that it got designated and today morning it is getting cancelled. So Tropical Cyclone Paul, it was a fast, mean system. Uh, it didn't get, I mean, it only got to Category 3 status. I don't know why I'm talking it up like crazy. It didn't really give Queensland a scare at all, but it just shows you that systems can take us by surprise every now and then and there's always going to be holes in the forecasting. No forecast model and no weather agency uh, really called for this system. So it was a very difficult system to kind of get our heads around once it formed. We're very thankful that it didn't form right on top of the Queensland coastline because it would have taken a lot of people by surprise. Now, in terms of uh, wet weather down for Southern Australia, well, there will be some cold front activity for Tasmania, especially. It's gonna start creeping up into Victoria, possibly uh, later in towards April. We're gonna be covering, covering this a lot more in our winter forecast. Let me tell you, the forecast is it's not what I expected, so it's probably not going to be what you expected either. Some locations are actually gonna have a pretty wet winter by the looks of things. And there'll also be likely some onshore flow activity over the next five to 10 days for the Eastern coast of Australia, extending down from the Sunshine Coast right down towards Bega on the southern uh, New South Wales coastline near the New South Wales Queen uh, Victoria border rather. We could be seeing some rainfall accumulations possibly up towards 100 millimeters or so later on in the forecast period. But once again, not reciprocated amongst the forecast models. We're gonna have to wait and see on what actually happens there. And I believe once again, it is just an onshore flow. It's gonna be coming ashore possibly right around next Thursday or Friday. And yeah, the Access G3 model is really keen on this for uh, onshore flow actually happening, uh, I believe from Thursday onwards. But yeah, nothing crazy in terms of massive rainfall accumulations, just a hundred millimeters here and there. So yeah, make sure you are staying safe out there around the weather in Australia, especially up in far Northern Queensland. This is a lot of rainfall that's going to be coming ashore. So exercise caution when when preparing for this uh, big tropical mass of moisture. Um, right now, I can say for certain that there is gonna be a lot of rainfall. We just don't know exactly where it's going to be, if Cairns is gonna be impacted per se. But yeah, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, lock it in for some very heavy rain days. Uh, 300 millimeters a day is possible for Thursday and Friday, maybe 100 or 200 millimeters on Wednesday evening. Uh, prepare adequately for this weather event. You're probably going to see a late season burst of up to four, four or 500 millimeters of rainfall. So prepare like like that amount of rainfall is coming in. Uh, there'll be more coverage on this weather system as it uh, takes place and also over the coming couple of days. So make sure you are subscribed for that. And I'll be giving you the best advice on what to do actually. Uh, when this system it comes in. But, but anyways, thank you so much for watching this video. Your support really ha does mean a lot lately. And if you haven't already, then click the join button and select a category that you would like to intensify to, and I'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.